start on the CT side. You know, it is a game of two halves. That said, it's not as black and white as that. If you do start on the CT side, uh, you know where you are on the C side. You know how many rounds you have to win. And ideally, you have some kind of a cushion going into the second half. Whereas, if you start the T side first, let's say the CT side gets 13 rounds, then you are in the hell of a lot of trouble. So, uh, again, all to play for in this knife run for those reasons. And a lot of people going in on mouse pads on the bets as well. A lot of people need to take definitely underdogs on the numbers there. So it'd be very interesting to see if they're able to pull things together. But of course, mouse pads able to uh, actually stay on the CT side. That's, uh, as James just pointed out, pretty big deal. <laughs> we saw a lot of nuke on, uh, at least on our secondary stream for DreamHack. Which is kind of funny because there's like seven maps in the pool. Each team dropped a map. They just randomized between the remaining maps. We got nuke like three times in a row on a best of one uh, format. So that's uh, it's pretty brutal for some of those teams. But we, in all of those matches, we saw uh, the this, this people that started off on CT actually taking the match. Definitely a very tangible advantage to be had on the CT side. Absolutely. And, and how, how do you feel about the, the way uh, in the Valve Majors you have like a random selection from five remaining maps? Do you think that's a good thing? No. Or do you think it's a good thing? <laughs> you know, the only, the I, I, only I, I, reason, I, I, well, the main I, I, reason I like it is because sometimes it can be cobblestone and then dragon laws drop. That's true. Theoretically speaking. I mean, I guess it's it's there to kind of address the issue that otherwise people won't play certain maps at all. Yeah. And people always drop certain maps. They won't play certain crap maps like and, cobblestone. And I, th I think there is merit to the system, but I don't think it should be random between five maps at least. The, the team should or at least beat, veto, veto two each instead of just one. But never mind. We're into the match. We have this pistol and Lunatic, they need a strong start. And it uh, looks like Dumont's going to start working on that strong start with a quick pick onto Tarek. They have a lot of time. They can really sit on this. And sit on it, they will. And while we have a few seconds, I think I think I actually like the five map pool because otherwise you get, what, Dust2, Inferno and Mirage or something, like all the time, which is an issue we had before that came in. If you remember, it was almost always Inferno. So uh, I'm all I'm all for it, just not with cobblestone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're gonna make their way in onto the other side. Oh, with another kill and another one. That is three from the man. Lunatic off to a fantastic start, but uh, Cutler, he's got to do a five man to bring this back. He's got no kit. Already down to 53 health, and there it is, a bullet between the eyes, courtesy of Relics. And that's going to be a round for they Lunatic. stole his gun as well. No respect. This is really nice. This is a really nice start. Winning the pistol on, on the T, T side is, is such a relief. For the, T, for the T side, that is. Indeed, they, they, just, they were just huge frags. Look at the CZs. Honestly, this is, this is like the most broken setup possible. Four CZs in the Scout. Scout's so good. Yeah, I just, I, I really hope they, uh, when I see 4CZ, I don't even feel like commentating the round. I just, I just sincerely hope, I mean, I think they had time, enough time before DreamHack to ready a patch for the CZ for this week. I don't think they ever will, because of, don't all, the, say that. of all the skins and everything, I think the best bet is for tournaments to, to actually take a stand and ban the weapon from being used in tournaments. I think that's the only way it's going to work. I don't think Valve will change it. They have to change it. But, it's I, completely but I don't think that they will. I they must. <laughs> they've had so much time to do it. Why not? I think they've acknowledged. Like, I've been whining about it for pretty much our entire league, but now, now the pros are starting to speak up. I think uh, they I have mean, to. It's, it's, they they have the mob rule behind them. It's a pretty. The consensus is there, really. I mean, I think, I think the best bet is just for tournaments to, to do it, to ban it. I would love that. Anyway. Oh, it does seem to be that uh, we have a round on our hands with uh, two CZs and a scout still in play. Master Spaz. And the save of these would definitely be is definitely a, good, a smart choice. And uh, maybe try to find some exits. We saw Tarek actually taking up a Galil. So uh, actually coming out with some, some positives here for Master Spaz. I feel like the Mac 10 icon is a bit. Small. Underwhelming. <laughs> it's a bit too small, isn't it? It just looks small. like it, it looks like it's made for a baby. I think it was though. Have you seen a Mac 10? It's tiny. You know, uh, I think it's proportional. 
Hez, Almost there. Hez from Mike's MG Female could probably hold that. She has really small fingers. <laughs> Belen's just rocking. And I'm just like looking at all of the the, the icons for everything. See, so the, the CZ is bigger than the Max 10. Yeah, it is. It's more powerful as well. LOL! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well. It's going to be a very interesting round here with the, the, the weapons that were scrapped together from Maspaz on the previous. What, what they could save in the previous round, like a little on Parrick. And uh, Valence is still with the, the CZ in his hand, probably wants that AWP in the following round. And they're just, they're just very wary right now for any pushes or any, any kind of freaky action coming in from, from their opposition. But so far, Mouse Baz are just willing to sit on this as well. Just chilling and just waiting for their crosshairs to be met with terrorists. What do you think PTR stands for? Peter? Peter. That's my guess. There you go. Tarek already with a single frag with a Gilil, holding down ramp. And another frag coming in as well from PTR. Should we call him Peter? We probably should call him Peter. <laughs> it's taken us two maps to figure this out. I, I saw it on the first map, but I'm like, sometimes... Hey, it was shorter than Cutler and Redluck, right? But I mean, he wrote his name up. Yeah. But it, is, it is a very sketchy situation now for Lunatic. They are cleaning up a little bit here. Mousepad is going to find themselves with a the victory there. That's kind of a big deal. You don't really want that to happen, to say the least here. Lunatic has such a big, big possibility to just run away with a good few rounds at the start of this. But already Mousepad, before they they buy rounds, they take a round off of Lunatic. Peter has an AWP. This is not good news for the terrorists. He is going to go outside for a standard position. Uh, the other one being ramp. Sometimes you see JW play sh uh, squeaky. I think it's short. Play squeaky with JWP. But uh, does not play for either of these teams. So it's interesting the position um, some AWPers take in Mac as it was known in 1.6. Because it said Mac on the side. Well, it's going to have a quick peek and then jump down. Don't often see that so far, but uh, they're going to be want to press. It. They're going to be want wanting to press on. My English is failing me, as uh, nobody's dead for either side yet, and they are 55 seconds on the clock. They're going to have to figure out where they want to uh, try and find an opening. We've got an aggressive positioning from Tarek, but has he exposed his position? I think he may have, and uh, he's not going to see those two Ts. By T Red, and then he's going to come into the A side and spray down. He's going to take down two. And uh, oh, he's got the full run Jeremy as he's taken out three people with that spray. And only Glorin's remains with 27 HP and a CZ. Let's see if he can pick up a weapon here. Let's get the Galil Cerberus. And uh, it's all gone a bit quiet here. Is he going to try and get a bomb plant? Uh, damage is definitely going to just a kill or two from Fantastic. But a uh, very nice hold here from Mousepaz. Just, uh, I mean, they weren't really able to get the flashes in very effectively there onto the upper site when they all rushed through the door. And that, that seemed to be a bit of a problem, all getting sprayed down like that. Very, very well done by uh, FNS there. And now, you know, with the AWP on Peter and all the nades coming into play, things are starting to get a little bit hairy now for Lunatic as uh, Mousepad has really get that setup running. And this should be a clean round for them too. I mean, only P250s and a few nades. Two smokes, a flash and an HE there. And, uh, HE to blow up the door. Is he, he going to smoke main actually? That's interesting because then they could try to wrap around outside. That would be really interesting. Yeah, it looks like they might just go for that. Smoked off the garage wall. Looks like they're going to go for the main play. The secret is also accessible as well. And uh, like uh, Peter's going to find himself a single frag. It's, it's one after the other now. This dude is a machine. What the hell? Relix close though. Oh, look at that. The defense coming from Cutler. going to save Peter. And they only lose one. That's the nice result for Mouse Spaz. But now the AK is coming into play for Lunatic. How do they choose to use them? Not much left over for nades here. They do have enough smokes to like sort of smoke all of outside. 
That would certainly be nice to see if they if they could take some control of it with that those AKs. I have a sneaky eco tactic that I made where you bounce a grenade off the hut window, which kills the vent and the door. Then you bounce the smoke off there, and there with the right timing you can run through the smoke into the vent without anybody seeing you unless they're directly above and get a really sneaky quick uh, bomb plant before anyone knows what's going on. Nice. I should make a video. Where's your video? I only realized um, how to use my graphics card yesterday. Actually. How to you use your graphics card? Meathead. Um, I was, I'll tell you in a second. Peter, again, just causing absolute havoc outside, taking down yet another player. Going to slow down the push here from the tees. One person is down secret though, which is going to open up the map for these terrorists. Terrorists, if you're George Bush. And uh, FNS is going to take down and do more. Be coming back up from secret and uh, whack-a-mole it will be as Peter does oblige and Slimpy will follow soon after. Glorens once again, last man standing here. So uh, they managed to get some real estate going down secret but came back up only to find Peter. Not happy. Four to two, Mouse Pass starting to really come into their own. Peter up uh, in heaven there after being spotted on the outer catwalk, definitely doing a lot of damage. And that kind of blew up the round for Lunatic. And it's it's really nice to see moves like that. When you've got a round where the outside push could be actually be quite, quite scary. I so actually saw Fetish doing this a lot in a dream hack. It's like nice to take a risk and just appear out there, even without support, and just just get that the first frag there and just get yourself back. Because uh, then you get to see what's going on, you get a kill, and uh, usually it's hard for them to predict that that's going to happen. So I really like that move from from Mousepads on the outside from Peter. Very good stuff. Right, so we've got dual elites here for Glorin. He's doing cowboy style. Kill Bill. Got three in the vents. Looks like they're going to get the bomb plant down as well. That's going to be a good money injection should they lose this round. $800 per person for getting the bomb planted. Relic's going to be in the vents behind his opposition. Trying to eliminate with the CZ. Does get the frag, but he's got not much remaining. Only had one in the chamber on that M4 as well, so he will fall. But again, that is $800 per person bonus for getting the bomb down, which will allow T's to buy in the next round. I was going to say, I'm like, oh, I was a little surprised Harry actually pushed in there, being so low on health. But then again, they got loads of bank, so it doesn't really matter all too much. And uh, now Spaz taking a commanding lead of the game now. And if they were to win this round, it would start to really spiral out of control for Lunatic. But, uh, but uh, <laughs> that happened even at DreamHack. But uh, yeah, mouse buzz. With a bit of aggression outside. Three people outside actually. Really nice movement from them. Gonna shut it down completely. Lunatic wanted it, but they realized that they'd, it'd be a bit a bit of a foolish errand to try to challenge it at this point and and uh, they're successfully diverted. I feel like I wanna say that uh, Peter has shut down um, outside. But it's not really true. He's annihilating people outside. But again, they they had they made it a secret. But then they came back up only to be shot by Peter. So hopefully That's they don't true. do that again if they do make it there and they can uh, find something more meaningful with the territory they take. Smoke's just um, stopping any kind of push on ramp at the moment. Do more. Just been admiring these pixels for quite a while now. And look at the time it's burning on the clock. 35 seconds remaining here. And uh, not, well, the FNS has 87 HP. Other than that, not a touch on the CTs. So uh, now it's time to push. As more nades come in, flashbang, Molotovs. There, are, there will be two frags on ramp, though. They've got 20 seconds to plant the bomb. We will have the CTs with an easy rotation through the vents. FNS has uh, got the window area as well. So don't really stand a chance of winning this round. Can't even get the bomb down. That's pretty much going to be a wrap three on three. Yeah, really nice entries from Dumour onto Ramp, but it's all for naught as uh, they all get cleaned up. And again, we made this point on Inferno, just power of incendiaries that we saw. Smoke. Smoke. Incendiary. Oh, there's like 25 seconds left. I guess we've kind of got to run through this, this incendiary. And in doing so, they're all so weak. Even getting two phenomenal entries, it still just wasn't enough. Mousepass has had actually really good positions. 
like having a guy in long as well is really, really well done. Yeah, that's a very important um, position to hold pre and post plan for both teams. And uh, again, once you get to that kind of sub 40 second mark, it's very, very difficult to clear out the site properly and get the bomb down. You pretty much have to go hell for lever and just gamble on getting a frag here and there and getting the bomb down. That often doesn't go your way unless your name is Navi. Yeah, and, and also just the fact that you have to move into positions you're not quite ready to, to take, actually, as well, because the time demands it, otherwise you lose the round. And look at this tag up close and personal with the M4. Two quick frags as they make their way in. And uh, Mouse Bad's all over this now. They've got FNS up on the dog walk. He's going to be just spraying down on top of their heads. It's two easy frags. And Lunatic with a, a round that looked without inspiration and perhaps a little bit more desperation instead. Too much money on the CT side. They are five rounds ahead here. Lunatic with only two rounds on the board. And again, we were saying if it finishes, say, 13-2, then Lunatic are going to be at an extreme disadvantage. And that is the potential score that we may see at this point in time. They've got four AKs and a Galil. They've all got smoke grenades, a few flashbangs, and uh, one HG. So we'll see how they choose to execute with those items. But uh, for the time being, they're just going to make sure there's no flank. They don't get pushed in lobby. Might have some people on the roof as well. And uh, Valens is going to find Tarek with that Galil. So early advantage here, but can they uh, capitalize on it? Time to play with still, and uh, as ever, we see all the smokes coming to play. And still all the areas on all the remaining players, so can still put forward some delay. But uh, Lunatic ready to actually try to wrap around here. Going to just drop into main and uh, just follow themselves back into hell as Lunatic are just all over the shop at the moment. They have players in lobby still also. Do you want boosters to turn up? Look at that beautiful radio push there from Malzberg. Absolutely phenomenal work. Going to take down lobby as the terrorists do shuffle on into hell. And Peter with the denial. Strong stuff there now as it all falls onto relics. But really it's going to be very, very tasking. As it only has 20 seconds left, less than that, 15 seconds left. And they're all surrounding him. Now they're just trying to get up the ladder, it's not going to happen. And another round closed out by Mousepaz. Handling situations, reading situations very well. Indeed, and the money continues to build on the Mousepaz side. 8-2 now is the score as we find Lunatic on another eco. We've got three CZ, a Glock, and a P250 coming out. So, interestingly, Valens with uh, $3,700 doesn't buy any even... Oh, there we go, finally. Get the uh, CZ out as well. So it's a CZ party here. Someone bring the piñata on the uh, T side. Let's see how many frags they can get. Wouldn't be surprised if it was a team ace. Smokes forever, just a nightmare. And then they go into the frag movie <laughs> as color comes them all down. Here is the ace, not quite. Valen's going to steal that one away from him, unfortunately. But here it is, Harry cleaning it up. Yeah, a nasty little dink there, but he's going to be fine. All patched up, ready and raring to go for the next round. As we see, 92 the score, and Mouse is doing what they need to do here. Lunatic, though, still with every chance to have a good half just by getting another couple rounds. Indeed, five AKs on the Lunatic side. Valens had 6,500 in the bank after armor, I believe, so I uh, could have bought AWP. He was the last to buy, so I, I presume there was some kind of discussion as to whether or not to buy it, and they decided against it. So, one for uh, mobility with the five AKs rather than the uh, AWP, which we do find on Peter, who, again, has been causing havoc with the AWP across all of these maps and continues to do so on this one as well. So uh, we've got the T's huddled. I think this is going to be the wall smoke outside where they completely um, close off from the main area to secret. Indeed, it is going to be the wall smoke, so I not agree. But if we on catwalk, that is going to be um, Tarek. The kill's coming in thick and fast here. Only two T's remaining. Nade should take him out. Nope, not far enough. 
lunatic in trouble. It's going to be almost a wipeout there for Mouse Baz. 10 2 now is the score. Yeah, really, really, really struggling. Mouse Baz never really looking back from that, that, that round where they were able to take it against Lunatic just with some pistols uh, before, before their buy rounds. And, you know, that, that really just put Lunatic to a situation where instead of having three or four rounds, they were on two and they just, they just never, never happened for them. So uh, we'll have to see if uh, some more awesome entries can follow from this. A few more, I think. Oh, another one coming. Fantastic work from him. He has been on point with these on all maps, do more. Always when Lunatic are in trouble, he delivers those entry frags. Holding Ramp by himself at the moment, and his team is trying to work their way into other areas of the map at the same time, it seems. But so far to be denied. Indeed, a one-man advantage here for the Lunatic side, but no bomb plant just yet. Again, it will be vital to them. I think they're just waiting for the season to come in and overextend, but it's going to be two solid frags there for Tarek, and the bomb is going to be down. He's probably seen that one person still on the side. It's going to be Valenz, Valenz directly below him. The flank is possible from Slempy. Valenz will take down FNS, and uh, these two remaining CTs very low on health here, Slempy. Looking to cause some trouble here. If he comes in at the right time, he can get the frag, and indeed he does. Again, the last player, Hayes, is in long at the moment. Makes his position known. Does get the frag on Valenz. The doors are closed, so he'll be able, he'll, he will be able to hide here for a little while. Slempy looking to uh, go up to the A side now. 14 seconds yeah. remaining, so I think he'll plant it for heaven. As the Hayes will look to catch up. Now this could get very interesting with the uh, that's a hate has to work with. That comes that very smart move there. Slampy not wanting to spam through the smoke. He's just going to be able to run his way up. Slampy on the angle though, and it's not going to happen for Haste. As Lunatic will pull themselves one more round. So the 13-2 is not real, but we could see a 12-3 here. As uh, there's still a lot of money on this CT side. Lunatic, they were next to nothing in the bank, even after winning that round. So many people have to rebuy. They just uh, depleted their resources. It's going to be a nice smoke grenade towards main, bouncing off that uh, structure over the fence. We'll see a boost onto the silo here as Peter looks outside. He's ready for this. Waiting for them to step into the reticle. There it is. Clockwork, clockwork there for Peter. The lunatic now have to look for another answer to create. 12-3 yeah, 12, 12 would be huge for the mouse bears. I know they probably wanted the 13-2, but uh, may have to settle if things continue to go their way. It is a one-man advantage early on for the CT here. 60 seconds remaining now to the up. Increasing second by second for them to go for a push here. Looks like it could be a looking to uh, blow off the squeaky door here. Could also be a fake. We'll find out. Let's get some picks in onto ramp as well. Cutler's only there with an M4. Ready to drop down though. Uh, there it is. Also about to delay a little bit. Better position. Peter coming into play as they do push back. A little bit as well, and that's Hayes finding a kill on Tower Valance. It's only going left. He's done a remarkable work before in a position like this, but not to be just yet, as uh, Master Fans do make themselves 11 rounds now against the three of Lunatic. It's just one more round till this half is over, and Lunatic, they better make that another victory. Indeed, and look at the mixed buy here from the Lunatic side of Galil, two CZ, two P250s two flashbangs. There's not a lot going on for this side here. I'm wondering if we're going to see an early rush. Indeed we are. The flames are there. And, uh, no one's getting fried just yet. We've got three people emerging from hut. This is a veritable slaughter. We're in an abattoir right now and that's going to be 12-3 to the Mouse Baz team. So it could all just rest on the pistol now as so if Mouse Spaz are able to win that. It should in theory just go to them straight out 16 to 3. But we'll see if they're able to do that. We'll see if Lunatic are able to fight back. You never know the pistols. That's that's the thing. 
heads get popped left and right, and you, you never know who's going to end up on top. Yes, if the Lunatic win the pistol, then uh, they should be a lot more comfortable going forward than if Mouse Bears do. I mean, that's fairly obvious, as they are only four rounds away from victory and eliminating Lunatic from this uh, eight-team single elimination bracket. Once again, we've got five thousand dollars on the line in this g2a.com december cup powered by face it so uh all to play for here this round is important for both of you we go the push coming in onto the upper side now tarik leading the charge picking off one for mouse fast and there's another behind t vent and he's going to go down as well and this is looking really bad right now it's all left to valence he gets two quick frags down to 50 health no kevlar at all to speak of the HE, oh, he's met by two men. Mouse Baz take the pistol, and Lunatic have to be feeling gutted. Indeed, that is a uh, worst case scenario for them. They've gone for the buy. We can see Relics and Glorians both with the armor and the CZ. And in fact, they've all gone <laughs> for the armor. We've got three CZs, sorry, two CZs and three P250s. So interesting to get interested to see where those CZs go and how they'll close the range and go for those uh, one shot spray downs with the CZ. Glorians rotating through the B site towards Fikra, and we've got a number of enemies coming his way here. So uh, this could go horribly wrong here for the Siege. It's a nice setup to handle this, but Mouse Baz trying to use all the tricks in the book now, trying to get that uh, potential boost going up onto uh, Heaven from outside. But you don't have another man there to, to boost up to boost FNS in, but he did. He was able to just at least make it, or at least uh, check it out a little bit, so they know it's that it's recall. safe. But, uh, they're just trying to adjust their positions. Gloran's picked up that AK. Very dangerous now that with the armor as well. So. Careful not to set a foot wrong here. And they go smoke down onto the site as FNS takes control of the vent room. Do you more going to pick off haste and things are getting awkward here? FNS is going to come in from the back. That's one frag. Another one over by the glass there by the window. He's going to put this bomb down in amongst the smoke and that's Relics jumping around. And there it is. Peter going to finish off Glorance in a blaze of Galil glory. And we will have ourselves a 14 3 scoreline. So, Lunatic in a weird position here after that force buy. We've got uh, P250s all around, some of their team down to $1,600 here. So, even on the last round, or potential last round, should Mouse Baz win this round, I, am, I think we're going to see a really weak buy here from the CTs. No nades to speak of, save for one flashbang. So, uh, nothing fancy going to come out here for team, or either team as uh, Glorians does get taken out. It's very, uh, very grim stuff here now. And uh, after this match, we can we can take a look at the bracket so you guys can see how the tournament is, uh, is structured with all the teams. But... Uh, is definitely not looking too shabby. Lots of other... Other very interesting teams in this cup as well. We do have Iber Power Talked, uh, uh, what uh, Mouse Baz as we're seeing tonight, Elevate, Denial, SKDC, and uh, Area 51. All the players went to Area 51. Only Nozzles are left. Not going to see them ever again. <laughs> All right, so Joke 12 rounds in a row, Lunatic. That's what, the, that's what they have to do. Only M4s, no nades at all. So it's going to be pretty hard. And Mouse Bad is going to try to take outside immediately. And it's smart of Lunatic not to really commit anyone too heavily outside. They do have uh, something in Garage, I believe, that's very defensively positioned. It's pretty much just holding it. And they've got a guy in secret as well. So it's, uh, it's actually a nice setup from Lunatic. If he spots someone there, uh, Relic, he can wall bang them through the bottom right corner of that box as well, giving him a bit more protection. Uh, but he does have the silence on four and will opt to just abandon ship altogether. Go behind the bomb site and make it very difficult for them to plant the bomb. They may work out where he is because uh, they wouldn't have had any doors open. I'm not sure if the glass is back either, so it might be a giveaway there. You can see uh, Peter be looking for him in long as well and then opens the doors only to uh, find him face first. 
all on Glorians now in a one on three. And we've seen this situation many times before. Glorians takes down two in quick succession with the M4. Now just eight remains over by the bottom. Time is uh, still on his side. And that's it. Glorians with the three man clutch. And Lunatic stay in the game. But for how long? Glorians coming through just when he needs to. But look at the money on the CT side. Despite winning the run, they're still extremely poor. Whereas uh, Masspad is just rolling in cash at the moment. Cash and chocolate bars, baby. And they are out with another full buy. Looking to uh, put an end to this match here and now. Let's see if they can do it. Free incendiary there. But uh, Masspad is storming outside all over the place at the moment. And it's going to have to adjust very quickly. And see, oh, another frag towards main. This is getting out of hand. Another frag as well from FNS. Things looking really bad right now. Glorin going to have to put in some work, but he's going to get taken out. And it's now on Relic. One on three clutch. It's not going to happen. 16 to 4 final score there. Malspaz taking down Lunatic. And there you go. Um, pretty, pretty convincing.